everyone. Welcome to another episode of STX Weekly number 65, bringing you all the latest news from the world of sports tech. Let's kick us off with some funding news, as we always do. Last week, we didn't have too many stories. This week, we have quite a few. Um, leading off with eGym, a uh, Munich-based smart fitness equipment provider. They raised $225 million, uh, from... Let's, of course, a uh, round of applause for Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, his uh, VC firm, Affinity Partners, um, $225 million that they just raised. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, if you don't know what eGym is, they, are, they provide smart uh, gym equipment to gyms. They're not so much on the B2C angle. It's primarily B2B, but also uh, with, uh, have a wellness solution for corporates. They have 130 million in revenue, which they plan to grow to 260 million in 2023. So quite a big jump there. Actually, this is quite a nice story, uh, including some background on the founder. I would recommend you checking out this TechCrunch article. Next up, we have Hyperice, who secured 100 million, but they don't use the word, I think it's debt. Having read the article and having tried to read between the lines of the article, um, it goes on to say that Atlas Credit Partners, I think the clue is in that name as well, um, they are providing a $100 million strategic growth capital facility investment in Hyperice. So many words to say something fairly simple. We're giving you $100 million uh, to grow, but this is probably not equity. Again, they don't use the word debt, but it seems like it. it is for working capital management or for whatever else Hyperice may need the capital um, for. Uh, so this $100 million that Hyperice has access to, won't call it a funding round. Um, next up, we have Activate. We've actually covered them before. This is a company that seems to be raising money pretty often. They have raised a total of $35 million, 3.7 million in this round. This is from Will Ventures, Tal Ventures, and Benson Oak Ventures. What does Activate do? Activate is basically a sports management software but for schools, so not for the athletic programs or the universities or essentially institutions covered by the NCAA. This is for the school level, which are also um, very important, let's say, to the American sports ecosystem. That is Activate. Last up, a company that I know pretty well, Body, um, gets 2.2 million. Body is a company that helps you access fitness and wellness solutions while you're traveling. So you get essentially a my membership with body. And if you travel a lot uh, on work or in general, like I do a bit, um, you can access, get a membership with body and then access a network of gyms and fitness and wellness facilities. There is 2.2 million primarily from private investors and they hope to reshape the travel industry ushering a brighter future is what the investor said. Best of luck to that team. Uh, next up, a couple of not so nice stories. We had to bring it up. One football's demise, there's no other way to put it, has been talked about uh, uh, for a while now. The company has gone through two pretty exhaustive rounds of layoffs. Um, and now officially, and I think we covered the story a few weeks ago of the founder leaving the company, all because, well, this was why. In a lot of ways, they invested uh, a lot of the 300 million that they raised uh, in April. Sorry, they raised the funding in April 2022. So not long ago, um, a lot of that money went into this platform called Era. I think it's actually before that. I don't believe it's just a year. Maybe it has been only a year. So much has happened. Um, but Era, then NFT marketplace has officially closed down. Um, there are 170 million users strong one football, but even they couldn't support an NFT marketplace. Now, this comes with complications for the company because a lot of that capital was promised to uh, some pretty major leagues, including 60 million is owed to German, uh, the German football league, the DFL. And one football is not a small company, apart from the fact that they have 170 million users Look at their shareholders, uh, FC Barcelona, Manchester United, Manchester, sorry, FC Barcelona, Manchester City, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, and so on. They also acquired this through another company that they acquired, um, but we won't go into that. The point being that this is a company who launched an NFT platform, 
did not go well, has invested a lot of money there, and has since seen basically the company is, I don't want to say on its last legs because it's an app that I really use a lot of, but it's not looking good. Things are not looking good for one football. Another company where things are not looking so good is Dapper Labs. They announced also a third round of layoffs. They laid off 51 employees. Very emotional message from the CEO, Roham uh, Gare Gogzlu. I'm sure Gare Gozlu. I'm sure I said that wrong the first time. Apologies, Roham. Um, so he said, shared his email on Twitter. But Dapper Labs, who are, of course, behind NBA Top Shots and NFL All Day and CryptoKitties for uh, uh, OGs of the um, NFT space, they are not as negative as maybe things are with uh, one football. They say that they have enough capital um, to sustain their flow blockchain, which is what they operate on, as well as the company. They are just leaning out um, their operations. Um, I think they are still about a 300 and 16 people strong companies, what I read somewhere. Uh, yeah, 361 employees. They last raised 305 million in March of 21 and a two and a half billion dollar, 2.6 billion dollar valuation. So they say that they're not running out of capital. Maybe the layoffs are just what Rohan says they are. They're an efficiency, uh, part of an efficiency play. We hope uh, all the best for the remaining employees in the company. Moving swiftly on to more positive news in the Web3 space and, of course, the Women's World Cup, something that we've talked about quite a lot on uh, this channel and through our other content channels, is here. Um, and FIFA is investing a lot on... In, FIFA is investing more in FIFA World, their Roblox play. Um, so they're taking the Women's World Cup uh, to FIFA World. What happens there? Basically, there is a game that you can play. You can watch match highlights. You can get scores and the games that you can in, uh, engage in through your avatars. Um, there is uh, the virtual exhibition of the FIFA Plus Shiro's video series, which they launched exclusively for the World Cup. So more activations um, for the Women's World Cup happening on Roblox through FIFA World. The idea is fairly simple to get in touch with younger audiences. Uh, and get young boys and girls all invested and interested in watching the women's game. Uh, I know I certainly will be tracking the game, uh, tracking the tournament. I hope you will be too. Uh, second last story is actually one that I was a bit surprised by. This is maybe past our radar or I couldn't see that we've covered it anyway. We covered a couple of other bits of news from Scrum Ventures. It's a company that we know for a while. Uh, Michael Proman as well. We've even featured uh, him on our content in previous years. Well, they're a Japanese venture capital firm, uh, also based in the Valley. So they operate between the two places. Michael himself lives in Minneapolis, as this article says. This article was an interview for Sportico. Um, so they have a $120 million fund for which they call the Scrum Sports and Entertainment Fund. Uh, was formed in late 2022. I haven't seen any other public announcements. So we're going to kind of treat this as the public announcement for the fund. So another new player, uh, well, an old player who's launching, I think it's fund two for these guys. Fund is backed by a number of leading Japanese VCs and massive conglomerates, including the Celsius Mitsubishi UFJ Bank, which has $100 billion in market cap. So big companies behind them. Um, the only other thing that they have already started deploying uh, capital, I won't talk uh, too much about it. Um, I would only quote one line from the article, which says that Michael, well, Michael says that I refer to us as a tech fund that invests in sports and entertainment. It is a very subtle difference. The point being that they are very much tech focused, but with a sports and entertainment uh, focus. Um, so not investing in, let's say, sports rights or sports teams or leagues, or things of that nature. All right, and my top story for the week, it feels not that long ago where we used to talk about Peloton, it felt like almost every week on the show. Now it feels like fanatics, whether they're buying companies in Japan or in Italy or you know, launching all sorts of new businesses. This is one there where they're getting interested in live events. Fanatics basically wants to host a Comic-Con equivalent for sports collectibles. 
or maybe it's for sports in general, but certainly leading with sports collectibles. They want to get a coming on experience for sports collectibles, it says right there. Um, they will do this in partnership with IMG. They have hired uh, somebody uh, to lead this business who was the former head of New York Comic Con. Uh, Fensterman is the, Lance Fensterman, the CEO of Fanatics Events, um, left Read Pop and where he was involved in New York Comic Con. Why is this relevant? Because it's just another divestment. Fanatics is a tech company started in e-commerce. They've uh, put in another bid for PointsPet, which they're a, com a company they've been trying to acquire and have been um, basically um, battling with uh, DraftKings on. They've so they've got uh, um, their e-commerce, which is their core business. They've got a sports book. They've got a digital collectibles uh, version uh, uh, offering, which they kind of pulled out of, from, from which was with Candy Digital. They have a physical uh, collectibles offering for sure, which is like digital uh, in the digital space. Now they're talking about events. All of this leading to their IPO, which surely is admitted at this point. They're making a lot of noise. They continue to hold um, meetings for this. So every expansion of their business is to fuel their IPO conversation. And surely Fanatics will be the biggest IPO in the sports tech space. I think the last valuation, the last round that they did was $700 million at a $31 billion valuation. They want to boost that further, of course. Um, so this is just another business vertical from Fanatics to help them um, to that end. All right, that is it for now. That is another episode done. Please be made sure to uh, check us out on Twitter, on LinkedIn. If you've liked this episode, please do drop us a share uh, or let somebody else know about um, what we do. We have been creating a lot more content. We've actually launched our video podcast series. Go check that out on our YouTube channel as well. Till then, see you next week.